It is.
gathered together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. We celebrate today the feast day of the Holy Family. And recognizing that there is such a such a, a welcome, such a nourishing awaiting us in this, this sacramental feast, the word and sacrament, uh, we recognize that we need to uh, to grow in our own holiness, and the only way to do that is to welcome God's mercy into our lives. So we call to mind our sins, preparing ourselves for these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who are pleased to give us the shining example of the Holy Family, graciously grant that we may imitate them in practicing the virtues of family life and in the bonds of charity, and so in the joy of your house, delight one day in eternal rewards through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. sets a father in honor over his children. A mother's authority he confirms over her sons. Whoever honors his father atones for sins and preserves himself from them. When he prays, he is heard. He stores up riches who reveres his mother. Whoever honors his father is gladdened by children. And when he prays, is heard. Whoever reveres his father will live a long life. He who obeys his father brings comfort to his mother. My son, take care of your father when he is old. <clears throat> Grieve him not as long as he lives. Even if his mind fails, Consider, be considerate of him. Revive him not all the days of his life. Kindness to a father will not be forgotten. Firmly planted against the debt of your sins, 
a house raised in justice to you. The word of the Lord. St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, put on as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If one has a grievance against another, as the Lord has forgiven you, so must you also do. And over all of these put on love, that is the bond of perfection. And the peace of Christ control your hearts, the peace into which you were also called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. And as in all wisdom, you teach and admonish one another singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in the word or in deed, do everything in the name of Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father through him. Wives, be subordinate to your husbands as is proper with the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and avoid any bitterness toward them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this is pleasing to the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children, so they may not become discouraged. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks.
with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the days were completed for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord, and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons, in accordance with the dictate in the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in the sight of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and glory for your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will, co will be contradicted, and you yourself a sword will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband after her marriage, and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day with fasting and prayer. And coming forward at that, at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were awaiting the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we celebrate the solemnity of the Holy Family of Jesus. Mary and Joseph. What makes them holy? I guess you have the, the obvious. Jesus is God. And uh, the Blessed Mother, well, she gave birth to God. So she's, she's obviously pretty holy. St. Joseph entrusted to care for both of them. He must be pretty holy. We've got this, this pretty high standard before us. But, but I think it's more than just what, uh, what, than who they are, than there's something deeper about what is their holiness? What are they offering to us today? And our celebration today is really inviting us to consider the holiness of our own families. Can our families be holy? Is, is holiness the value that governs your house? Is holiness something that you desire together as a family unit, as a couple, as a household? It's a daily struggle. I know, and you're probably thinking, I don't know, if you had seen my, my family Zoom calls this week, you'd probably be saying, no, we are not losing holiness. Mm -hmm. Or maybe that, that car ride to church rushing to Mass on Christmas, stressful, trying to make sure everyone's dressed, clean, so all that stuff. I don't know, is holiness really my family? I don't know. We have some beautiful advice in our readings today. From the, the book of Sirach, he who obeys his father brings comfort to his mother. Take care of your father when he is old, and if his mind should go, be considerate of him. St. Paul gives us a fantastic mission statement for our families. Put on heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience. Bear with one another. Be forgiving. And above all, put on love. Yeah, 
so important that we, we bear with the faults of our family members, that we be forgiving, that we don't hold grudges. How important is that? And to do it all with love. But friends, if you notice it, these things say nothing about holiness. You don't have to be a person of faith to, to take care of your parents or to be compassionate, to be forgiving. All of us as, as people of faith, though, should do that. Of course, they are all very good things. So what is it that, that makes us holy as a family? And today we have Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, a family as a whole. What makes them holy? We just heard in that, that gospel passage, Joseph and Mary bring the infant Jesus into the temple to present him to the Lord. They were doing exactly what they were supposed to do. Basically, it was a practice that was recognizing that this child, like every other child since, is purely a gift from God. Dedicating a child to the Lord is basically a family saying, God, because of your unfathomable goodness, I know that this child does not belong to us, but to you. Please guide him or her according to your purposes, Lord, not ours. So it's their faithful, loving obedience to the will of the Father that makes this new little family holy. They recognize the priority of God in their life and that the purposes of God are more important than their own, even when that means that their plans get drastically changed. Think about Mary, who received that message from the angel, and in faith and trust, she submitted herself to trust that God would not leave her alone, regardless of what the situation in front of her might be. Same with Joseph. Obedient to the messages of the angel, he took Mary into his home. He protected her and the child, brought them to safety from the threats of Herod. It's by their very actions that Joseph and Mary revealed to us their willingness to be obedient to God. To put God first, no matter how daunting or difficult the situation or life circumstances around them. But we often hear obedience and we think powerlessness. We sometimes hear it and think slavery. They were, con they were confined, they were trapped. But it's quite the opposite here in this context, especially if we consider that the Latin root of, of, of obedience, obedire, means to listen. What makes this holy family holy is that they are, their entirety is just one openness to listen to God. To listen to God and to put Him first in their lives. So, what about us? What about us as we're wrapping up 2020? The family gathered here in worship. How often over these past few months have we felt powerless? We felt trapped, hopeless. How have we as a family been challenged to trust to pray, to fast, to listen for God in our life more. Can you point out the moments over the past year where God was trying to reassure you of his ever-loving presence, that God was calling out to you, as, as Father O'Connor reminded us on Christmas? What have we learned about the holiness of our families? Likely, your family spent a lot more time forced together in the same house, or you had the opposite experience, where you were so isolated and removed from your family and your loved ones far away. Or probably it was a, a variation of both, some, somewhere in the middle. I think we learned the hard way once again that love intimately is connected with sacrifice, especially within the context of the family. We were made aware again of the meaning and value of real presence. And at some point, those the phone calls and the Zoom calls are just feel that. And that's a really good thing that we learn to value real presence. We have to continue to learn from these positive lessons that we take from this year into the future. Because we're reminded that faith in the family doesn't make life perfect. But somehow, rather, it makes life mysteriously so much more possible. Just look at how far we've come in this pandemic. All the stories of, of great perseverance, of real service, we know that, spoken or not, they're all grounded truly in the loving presence of Jesus Christ and what and sacrifice and faith. And it's true that, that Jesus really does become our strength in these moments of difficulty and despair. And so when we look at our busy and chaotic lives, what is the answer? But this school of Nazareth, this holy family of 
Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, who, who teach us just how much the priority of God matters in our life, that we need to look at our situations always through the lens of prayer and to be open to listening for where God is present. Family becomes strongest. Family becomes unbreakable when trust in, in God is its foundation. And even here, our parish family of St. Elizabeth and Sea, if you are alone or you feel isolated, you are always happy part of this family, the church. Always, especially when we gather for the Eucharist. So it's loving, presence, and sacrifice. This is really the recipe for a holy family. And love, presence, and sacrifice this happens to be what constitutes the Eucharist. There's a big connection there. The more our families become Eucharistic, the stronger and more unbreakable our families become. At the end of this week, we will celebrate the solemnity of Mary, the Mother of God, also known as New Year's Day. And I think as we approach 2021, I think it's an opportunity for us to reevaluate our house, to reflect on on the blessings and the challenges that came from this year and realize is holiness something of value to my house is it what governs my household if it's not then why don't we buckle down and recommit ourselves as a family these are some some good tips easy tips just within the next couple weeks next weekend we'll have the epiphany house blessing kits as a parish it's an opportunity for you to to bless your homes Pray as a family and mark them as a safe place and holy place where Jesus is known and loved. What about stopping in together here Tuesday nights for our adoration? Even if it's just five to ten minutes, offering prayers for each other. Think about how that will unite your family. And keep you guys connected, uh, not just in a, in a household, but on a spiritual level, much deeper level. It's even a way to stay connected with those people in your family who are far away. Bringing them to the Lord. What about uh, celebrating the anniversary of your baptism throughout the year? That's um, a fun way. I know that my baptism is, is May 10th, and it's always a special day to me because your, the day of your baptism is the day that God claimed you specifically for his own. What a special day to remember. Maybe you should make that something that you mark on the calendar this year. Whatever it might be, I think you should make resolutions together as a family that will continue to strengthen it in faith, so that whatever 2021 may throw at us, we can be ready. So if love, sacrifice, and real presence define your family, I know that together we will certainly be able to pray the, the prayer of praise that is echoed from Joshua in the Old Testament that says, As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Together we profess our faith. Spirit, who was 
united as a family of faith, we make our prayers known this day. For the mystical body of Christ, our family throughout the world, may we be united by the peace of the newborn Savior. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear For reconciliation and healing in our families, for our loved ones who have fallen away from the practice of the faith, and that we become instruments of God's mercy and forgiveness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear that our youth and young adults may have models of faith in their lives to guide them in the example of Mary and Joseph. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our that families in our diocese will nourish in their homes a holy environment for their children to prayerfully discern their vocations. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for those of our St. Elizabeth and St. <coughs> Parish family who are sick and for their caregivers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For Sharon Hastings, Nancy Reeves, Jim O'Connell, and Beth Gilchrist, whom we remember in a special way in today's Mass. And for all who have died, may they enjoy eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Can we take another moment in the silence of our hearts? Bring God the prayers, petitions, which are for us each day. For one another's intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, thank you for uniting us together as family and for your providence which cares for us. Help us to always find an answer to these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. We offer you, Lord, the sacrifice of consolation, humbly asking that, through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and Saint Joseph, you may establish our families firmly in your grace and in your peace through Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for through him, the holy exchange that restores our life has shone forth today in splendor. When our frailty is assumed by your word, not only does human mortality receive unending honor, but by this wondrous union, we too are made eternal. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. <coughs> so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body 
and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. We continue to pray with our friends at home. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot in this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I am 
embrace you as if you were already there, and do not make myself holy to you. Never permit me to do this again. Let us pray. Bring those you refresh with this heavenly sacrament, most merciful Father, to imitate constantly the example of the Holy Family, so that after the trials of this world, we may share their company forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. You notice the kings are on the move, the Magi, right? They were down at the end of the ramp last week. They're peeking out halfway up. They're on the way, all right? So I asked you last week, you got to figure out what their names were. Hopefully you're doing that research now. This week's assignment, what gifts are they bringing? What are the three gifts they're bringing? They'll be with us. They'll make it. They're going to make it here next week, all right? And they're bringing gifts to Jesus. The church is going to bring gifts to you. Brennan mentioned it, the Epiphany Home Blessing Kids. So if you've got, you know, kids, grandkids, maybe you've been away for a while, like, hey, you're not going to believe it. The church is actually giving us something this week. you got to come, all right? So uh, we want to make sure you guys have a chance to, to take that into your homes. We kick off our bicentennial year, 200 years, and send it and see it heaven, what a great year it's going to be in front of us in 2021, so we hope you can be with us. Uh, also mentioned was that uh, Brendan, Deacon, Brendan, Deacon Brendan mentioned that uh, Friday, January 1, is the Holy Day, Solemnity uh, of, of Mary, so please join us for, for Mass to kick off the New Year on uh, Friday. Okay, we'll be in a prayer. It's in the back of the book. Oh, Mary, oh, Mary, in this time of illness, Son's throne of grace and mercy. We ask for strength and adversity, health and weakness, and comfort and sorrow. Help us, O Blessed Mother, to be filled with confidence and trust in the tender compassion of our God. Let us not be afraid, like our own Saint Mary and Pope, who entrust her life and ministry among the outcasts of society in the care of our times. Continue to watch over all of our sick, as well as those who care for them, and bring them to all of our sins and glory. We have a justice for our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you. Father.